Kogi State Government vows to apprehend and prosecute perpetrators of killings in Dekina local government area. And the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mohamed Usunas Sanusi II, has said Nigeria has never been more divided since the Civil War of 1967 to 1970. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Governor Yahya Bolo of Kogi has vowed to bring the perpetrators behind the attacks on the communities in Dekina local government area of the state to justice. The governor gave the assurance when he led heads of security agencies in the state for an on-the-spot assessment of the communities. The governor, who was represented by his deputy, Edward Onoja, described the attacks as barbaric, though not very frequent in Kogi state. Some he say that the invaders stormed the communities shooting sporadically and burning hundreds of houses in the early morning raid. A chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Ande Oganegu Ward Chairman, James Ada, was among those killed in the attack. Many residents are said to have fled the communities in the wake of the assault, even as it remains unclear what the reason behind their invasion was. Well, that um, visit by the Deputy Governor, Edward Onoja, to the communities We'll bring you that report now before I introduce my guest. Stay with us. 2018, we only passed through this place to a boundary community in Basa local government. It wasn't as if something happened here in 2018. Certainly. It happened in a boundary community in ba but you have to pass through here to get there. Yes. And His Excellency came down here by himself. And for four years, or five years, from 2018 to now, it's five years. There has not been any of such incidents. And this does just happened. And as we speak, the military are fully on ground. From the very day that the incident happened, they even forestalled more casualty and more deaths. They've been on ground since then, and they'll remain on ground. And just like the Commissioner of Police confirmed to you, more deployments by the mobile police and terror anti-terrorist uh, squad would also be on that was Mr. Edward uh, Nodja, the Deputy Governor of Kogi State, uh, talking to us about the unfortunate incident and what has been done so far. We're being joined right now by Kingsley Fowler, the Honorable Commissioner for Information, Kogi State. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me, and uh, good evening to viewers around the world. Okay. Uh, well, there is that vow that uh, perpetrators will be brought to book. We'd like to know the situation right now in Kogi State. How far so far? Um, it's a very sad one. Um, I, I was um, on the entourage of the deputy governor to Oganenugu, Oganenugu in uh, the Kina local government area of the state. And what we saw there was um, um, not a good one at all. But, you know, as the government, the primary responsibility of government especially under the current administration in the state is to ensure security of lives and property. Uh, we've been there on the instruction of the governor, led by the deputy governor of the state, the state security advisor, all the security chiefs were all there yesterday uh, to see, to have a first-hand knowledge of uh, what happened and also uh, work in synergy uh, to ensure that future uh, occurrence is abated. Uh, we know that uh, we would get the perpetrators. We are never in doubt about that. Because uh, this security architecture is such that when you breach it, you don't go and punish because it is a very robust security architecture. And um, when you have, uh, when you breach it like those people did uh, and killed um, a few of our citizens, uh, even if you kill one Kogite, the governor will go after you and ensure that you are brought to justice. Uh, we've gathered, we, we know that the security agencies, in collaboration with um, the state government officials, are gathering a lot of intelligence, and uh, we are making progress. We, they will be apprehended, uh, according to uh, what the governor said. He's not just saying those words in vain. He knows, he understands his own security architecture, uh, that we will apprehend them and we will bring them to justice.
Just really debilitating. Um, a, a full community or full communities, hundreds of houses as the report goes, and people who have been killed and all that. And we are wondering, what is the motive behind this? Has any wind uh, been had regarding what the motive is and who the possible suspects could be? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, the, the community people felt uh, some people, I, I will not mention them, uh, some people orchestrated the violence and the maiming of their, of their uh, people. But, you know, we, we are going to follow the investigations very closely. We know that there are already clues, uh, but we are, we are leaving that to security operatives who are experts in dealing with those pieces of information and um, uh, ensuring that they are processed into unraveling the mystery behind the dastardly act. So uh, we will leave that to them. Uh, you know, the motive, we will also leave that to them. But I want to assure you that we already have clues. We already have clues. We already have information. And we are going to ensure that um, the security agencies process this information and the perpetrators are apprehended and brought to book. Uh, you know, what we saw there yesterday was, was mind-blowing. You, you know, you, houses were burned. Uh, properties belong to the people of the communities, not just organizing alone, uh, local and some other communities were also attacked and their houses were burnt, uh, property, properties worth uh, millions of naira were also burnt. So uh, it's, it's something that we will not, um, we will not um, um, allow it to just slide like that. As a government, we will ensure that um, we deal with this holistically and ensure that um, Anyone planning such uh, in future, we know that they will go the way of others. Like the governor will say, if they come in their thousands, they will go back in their zeros. So we are already on their trail, and we are very sure that they will be apprehended. Uh, apart get... from um, our visit to the place, there was also a stakeholders meeting at the palace of the Atta, Atta Igala, who is also the president of the Kogi State Traditional Council, where all the stakeholders Mieti um, leaders, community leaders, local government chairmen, officials of the state government had a very, very fruitful meeting and that, is, that has also given us a lot of clues and uh, the meeting was very helpful. And we know that apart from giving us the clues to be able to trail and apprehend the perpetrators of the, of the act, it will also guide us uh, in ensuring that um, we avert possible future occurrences. Okay, we were all glad when we saw that um, Kogi State Governor has, has been doing a lot of proactive, uh, taking, a, taking a lot of proactive measures to make sure that the security is intact in Kogi State. And like the Deputy Governor said, the last time uh, government official passed there was five years ago when a, a community at the border was uh, attacked. And right now this is happening. Just before the elections, we saw that even a road leading to a community was excavated to prevent these uh, bandits from entering some communities to go and cause havoc and all that. And then we get worried that this thing is happening at the twilight of this administration, which uh, uh, has been so, so proactive when it comes to security matters. Does it mean there has been a shake in the security architecture? Does it mean there has been a problem that has given room for these people to come and operate in their numbers in a community within Kogi that prides itself of being very security conscious? Even in the best societies in the world, you have the breaches of security. Uh, as we already told you, uh, something like that happened at a neighboring community um, five years ago. Uh, we are having a repeat uh, now. And uh, what we need to do is to recalibrate our security architecture as a state and uh, make it more robust because even the criminals, they're also going into research on how they will beat uh, the security architecture of how they will beat the trap and be able to uh, foment their criminal minded plans. But, but that's not going to deter us from raising the bar. What we need to do as a government, which is also our responsibility and also why um, there is a government is to raise the bar and ensure that they cannot catch up with our plans and our security architecture. Uh, we will continue to do this. As you are aware, Kogi remains one of the safest states uh, in the country. It is not just about how we avert some of these things in many of our local government areas and many of our communities, but also how we respond to these issues. 
Immediately this happened um, a few days ago, the governor mobilized and rallied all the security agencies to uh, be powerfully present in those communities. And immediately that was witnessed. Even um, the second wave of attack that was to be launched was abated by uh, the combined um, military and um, other uh, non-military forces that are there. So it shows that we are able to avert that and we are able to save uh, many lives that would have been lost to the second wave of attack uh, by the criminals. So uh, as a government, we, we know our responsibility is to, is to secure the people. And the governor has never shied away from this. He has invested billions of naira uh, to ensure that we have uh, the best of technology uh, and the best of weapons to be able to fight crime. And we will continue to do that. How would you assess the level of response from the security uh, agencies because some people complain. For instance, if I take Elder Leke Abejide, a frontline governorship aspirant under African Democratic uh, Congress, who said that the response of the security agencies was very uh, slow, uh, that a lot of things could have been averted if they had come earlier and all that. Is that really the, 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 the picture that we see from what happened in Kogi State, or was there a different thing that we need to hear about? He said the security agencies did not respond as quickly as they should have. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very sure Edaliki Abegide uh, doesn't have more information about this than us. And what he has been able to do is to play politics uh, with the blood of the people. Uh, I think a time like this requires all of us coming together bonding together to fight the criminals. Uh, whether you belong to APC, PDP, or ABC does not matter. What matters is all of us as, as a people, all of us as Kogi people come together uh, to fight this criminality. Know that we will be trying to score cheap political uh, points uh, when uh, we have this kind of bloodshed and the whole state is mourning. Uh, I, I think uh, our, our politicians will be a bit circumspect and uh, not throw everything into politics. I want to commend, on behalf of the state government, uh, the, the promptness of the security agencies. I just told you they were able to move in swiftly within hours. And you know, uh, that's a very, Oganani is a very difficult terrain. So for the military and the police and the DSS to be able to access that place uh, so easily uh, and so fast, uh, shows the commitment of the security agencies in Kogi State. When we talk about the success story of security in Kogi State, we are simply telling you how we have been able to work closely together with the security agencies to ensure security of our people. So this is not about politics. Politicians should come together. We are talking of the blood of fellow human beings here. They should not play politics with it. Both the military, the police, the civil defense, the DSS, all of them reacted promptly. Uh, to avert uh, further bloodletting. So we want to commend them. Okay, that was going to be my second question, but I'll just go ahead and ask you still to, uh, to expatiate on what you just said about collaborating with the uh, security agencies. Because if Kogi is this proactive and things get to be done the way they are done, we're wondering what else, what you do differently from other states, for instance, that gives you uh, this opportunity to fight crime and to be so security conscious in your state. What do you do differently? Because security is exclusively for the federal government. So what is it that you do as a state that makes it seamless for you to fight crime in your state? Our security conscious governor recognized very early that you don't win the fight against criminality and violence just with a kinetic approach alone. So we have been able to deploy the non-kinetic approach as such as ensuring that our youth in the state are well engaged. Uh, you know, many of the youth that are involved in crime are doing that because they don't have means of livelihood. So they are lured into crime, into killing other people uh, to get some blood money. Uh, but in Kogi State, we have been able to engage our youth in very productive ventures, and that has taken a good number of them away from crime. Apart from that, we have been able to introduce technology into uh, our crime uh, our crime war in the state. And that has helped us uh, tremendously. And that's why even when you have flashes of kidnapping, it's always very easy to locate, to geolocate where they are, uh, track them down, and be able to rescue our people alive without paying ransom. So th that's, that's one of the approach that we have been able to use. So apart from that, 
there is this collaborative approach. You cannot always fight with force all of the time. You engage dialogue. You interrogate some of these issues. You come around the table to discuss with all the stakeholders. And when you're able to do that, it makes, it makes uh, security um, a lot seamless. In our rural communities in Kogi State, Fulani headsmen and their leaders are part of um, some of the things that we do in our rural communities. They are invited to be briefed about security um, approaches. And, you know, they are, there is collaboration. So it is very difficult to track uh, criminals when criminals intrude their ranks. And um, that, is, that is helping us. A lot of sensitization, too. If you enter any village in Kogi State, within two minutes, uh, it will be reported to the um, relevant authorities of government and security agencies. Uh, these are some of the things that we have done. So you cannot harbor anywhere. Uh, like this attack, uh, as, we are, as, we are, as we are made to know, uh, pending the final release of, of investigations, uh, those people came from um, another state, infiltrated the place in the early hours of the day to be able to launch the attack. So we are going to put all of this into, you know, recalibrating our security architecture and uh, making it a lot better. So Kogi is far ahead when it comes to uh, security architecture among the states in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, do we have some kind of time element? Do we have some kind of time frame uh, when matching orders were given that all the security agencies should make sure that these people are apprehended? What time uh, frame are we looking at to get results? A lot of things is going to happen between um, between now and the realization of, of that matching order. So we are very confident that in a, in a couple of days, weeks, um, many of them will be apprehended. And, you know, they've done this before in the state. Even when there was jailbreak, you know, in Kogi, it was different. The, the way the government and the security agencies uh, responded to that, we were able to uh, bring a lot of them back, you know, apprehend a lot of the perpetrators, and they, they have been able to face justice. So um, I will assure the people that they should be calm. Uh, government is working with security agencies uh, to guarantee their security. Apart from that, I, I saw hope in the, uh, on the faces of the people of um, Oganen Enugu uh, when we got there yesterday. Uh, I remember that as we, were, as we were entering the community, some people were already putting their mattresses at the back of their motorcycles. But as soon as they saw a government presence, they came back. And, you know, that's what we do in Kogi State. We do not run away from the battlefront. We have a governor who leads from the front, and that gives a lot of confidence uh, to the people. So I, I want to assure you, I don't want to give, um, I don't want to give out too much information about this, but I want to assure you that in a couple of days, weeks, uh, they will be apprehended. Okay, in spite of your best efforts, um, well, let me commend you that you have done well, the government of Kogi, and we're hoping that we're going to have these results. But some people are still saying that it might have some political undertone. And even though you say we may not have the motive now and you don't want to divulge that, people have also uh, accused uh, the APC in the state, the ruling party in the state, as being very insensitive because they are going about campaigning even when the state is literally bleeding. So what is your response to this? I know that the campaign or the primaries for the election which is coming up in November uh, was slated for March and, and April to end in April 17 or, or thereabout. And so people are campaigning. But some other people said they expected that the ruling party will halt those campaigns for the state to mourn, as it were. But you have continued in your campaigns, even as the blood of the people flow. I'd like a response to that, please. I, I want to correct the impression uh, very quickly uh, that there is no campaign right now. We are preparing for um, primaries. You have candidates must emerge before you can now start campaigning. The candidates of the political parties uh, have not emerged yet except uh, only parties where you have a one-man show that there is no competition, no democratic um, antecedents and all of that. But, you know, in the APC and uh, many of the big political parties, apart from the mushroom parties, uh, candidates have not emerged yet. So uh, the question of uh, campaign does not even arise at all. Nobody's campaigning. We are mourning as a state. You know, for the governor to deploy 
the number two citizen of the state and all the, uh, the, the state government apparatus, the local government apparatus, all the security agencies uh, to those places. Uh, as at this time yesterday, uh, I was still with the deputy governor in Kogi East. So you understand what uh, that means. So we are not we are not campaigning. We cannot even campaign when we lose um, uh, more than two, three uh, of our citizens to circumstances uh, that are very unfortunate. So. Uh, the, that allegation is ludicrous, laughable, and very insensitive. It's like a macabre dance on the on the grave of those who lost their lives, and we should discourage that uh, as much as possible. So, uh, for the purpose of enlightenment, uh, let me say that there there are no campaigns in Kogi State right now. Uh, candidates will emerge. Then I make try and make timetable. Uh, you can you can easily verify uh, when campaigns would start. So this is not politics. It has to do with the security of the people. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Because whatever happens, and we get the information from whatever, court, whatever quarters, we give you the chance to respond to that. But an, a government is coming. May 29th, we're hoping that a new government is coming, federal government now. And security is one of the very, very turning issues that everybody is hoping will be addressed by the next government. What are the key pointers, knowing how successful Kogi has been in this security matter, as you say. Uh, what are some of the pointers that you think the next government should be considering to bring about this much-needed security in our country? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the good story here is that there is a very robust relationship between the president-elect, Ashwa Yubala Ahmed Tinubu, and um, our state governor, Governor Yahya Bello. Uh, even the security hierarchy, they understand the place of al Hadi Yahya Bello in the security of Kogi State and the North Central as a whole, uh, because of his commitment, because of his dynamism, because of his um, bloody-minded approach to ensuring that uh, no chances are not taken in ensuring the security of of the people. So I, I expect a lot of um, a lot of handshake, a lot of notes, um, comparison between the president-elect and the governor. Uh, to ensure that what has been achieved in Kogi State is replicated across the nation. It is one of the campaign points of the APC uh, in the run up to the 2023 presidential election. So it is expected that we are going to put that on the front burner and ensure that um, our people across the country are safe. It is the responsibility, it is going to be the responsibility of the president elect from May 29 uh, to ensure that Nigerians are safe. When you look at Bola Ahmed Chinubu, uh, from his uh, very success story uh, in Lagos, you would understand that he's um, one of the people who can identify competent people with capacity to deliver. He has done that in Lagos. He has produced some of the best leaders this nation uh, has witnessed. So uh, we expect that he's going to assemble a team, he's going to assemble a team, the security team of the nation will be proactive. That team will be able to put an end to insurgency and terrorism. And we are very confident that as, as far as we know, Bola Ahmed Tinubu will secure Nigeria. I can give that guarantee. Uh, well, uh, they, they say bed at hand is worth more than a million in the bush. If we have seen Kogi and Kogi is succeeding, as you are giving us the report now, uh, we also heard those kind of things before 2019 and even 2015 about security, and we didn't get to see much, even though it has been said that a lot has been done uh, regarding security, even though we don't see it as much as that. But the ones we already know in Kogi State, whether it is Ashiwaju Bola Chinubu that is coming or not, uh, Nigerians should have these pointers at their fingertips. What are some of the strongest ones? from the Kogi story, as it were, that you would put out there for whoever is going to come in, whether as a governor or as a president, to consider so that we will start seeing the security of our country from day to day. The first thing is that there must be sincerity on the part of the leadership of the nation, of the state, of the local government to ensure security. You know, when the people see that sincerity of purpose when they see commitment of the leader you know what's working uh, in kogi is that you have a leader that is out there leading you know from the front he's not he's not hiding behind he's, he's leading uh, five years ago he went through rivers he trekked many kilometers around that place that uh, this attack uh, just happened uh, to be able to give confidence to the people to be able to study the terrain himself 
that's what leaders should do. Uh, you know, before you can be a successful leader, you must circulate. Uh, according to the former American president, Abraham Lincoln, you need to circulate. You need to be able to see things yourself. You need to be able to monitor and supervise things yourself. You need to show commitment. You need to show sincerity. You need to, to show that you are not going to play um, ethnicity, religious cards when it comes to politics. You must attack it frontally. And we, we have the confidence that uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinobu is going to do that. that. That's the success story in Kogi State. They see sincerity in their leader. He doesn't play politics with it. He doesn't play religious card with it. He doesn't play ethnicity with it. When he came, when the governor came in 2016, the most volatile part of the state was Kogi Central, where we have some cells of even international terrorist organizations. But he attacked it frontally. He didn't say, oh, I'm from Kogi Central, so I have to treat it with kid gloves. Those are the leaders that Nigeria needs. And that is the kind of leader that Bola Ahmed Tinobu is. He's going to confront insecurity frontally. He's going to work with people who have made success stories in their states to be able to achieve that at the national level. So we, we have confidence uh, from May 29 uh, that uh, a lot will be done to ensure security of lives and property in Nigeria. Yahya Bilu was very sincere in Kogi State. He was leading from the front. He was investing billions in it, but not just putting the money and not uh, supervising it. No, he ensured that uh, you have patrol vans, you have uh, gadgets that will help to track kidnappers and criminals and all that. So we have been able to achieve this. So if we can achieve this in Kogi State, in a multi-ethnic, multi-religious state like Kogi State, why has it been so difficult for uh, you know the, the 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 story to be replicated at the national level. So you need that kind of um, the spirit of Al Haji Yahya Bello to be able to replicate that at the national level. And his 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 um, uh, political mentor is Bola Ahmed Tinobu. I I had the president elect say uh, say I had I had him say many times that the governor of Kogi State um, when he looks at the governor of Kogi State he remembers when he was younger. Uh, that he he has a lot of attributes uh, that he loves, including courage, boldness, and the readiness to take um, actions. You, you know, you need to take certain decisions, whether they are uh, palatable or not, whether they are comfortable for you or not. What is most important is to get results. And that is what our governor has been able to do in Kogi State. And that is what we believe, that Bola Ahmed Tinubu will replicate at the national stage, on the national stage from May 29. All of us hope so. This is our country and we'd like it to be very secure for all of us to be in it. And let's just digress in closing now uh, as, as we wrap up with you. Um, though we may not just talk uh, strictly about security, I'd like to know if Yahaya Bello leaves now because there's going to be an election in November and he will leave a, a, few, a few weeks or a few months after that. So what will be, in your opinion, the greatest legacies that he's going to leave? as a governor who came, who saw, and possibly conquered Kogi? The number one thing that um, he will be remembered for is security. He has been able to secure the state. He has been able to respond when there is breach of peace. Uh, he has been able to respond promptly. He has been able to lead from the front. And, and that's, um, that, that's, that's very important for the people of the state. Apart from that, he would want to be remembered as the person who addressed the health uh, challenges of the state. When he came on board, even the specialist uh, hospital, which, which was the biggest uh, owned by the state government, was in shambles, uh, you know, and it was like a glorified village clinic. But today, he has not only turned that to an international health institution, he has also built a brand new reference hospital uh, in Okene, uh, where you have some facilities that are debuting for the first time in Africa. Uh, you know, uh, from information reaching my office, they've started operations today, and uh, it shows that people who need hyperbaric uh, chamber, uh, chamber will have to come to Okene instead of going to Eastern Europe or Western Europe, they have to come to uh, Kogi State. So we can redress that when we show sincerity, and he'll be remembered for that. That is not just in Okene. Uh, we have um, the specialist hospital in Lokoja has been uh, completely turned to, you know, an international medical uh, institution. And uh, apart from the one he built in Okene, uh, there is one in Isonlu in the western uh, 
Senatorial District, another one at Gegu in the Western Central District. We have others in the Eastern Central District and also uh, in, in the Central Central District. So he has been able to show that when a leader is committed to his people, one of the things you need to do is to ensure well-being. When you secure the people, that is not enough. You must ensure that they have the best of healthcare facilities, and he has been able to provide that. He will also be remembered for his contribution to education. Apart from building world-class educational institutions and improving on the institutions that he made on ground, he has also ensured that uh, we have a peace, academic peace in our higher institutions. Why other, others go on strike, our higher institutions uh, are always working. Uh, you know, the issue of a strike does not does not happen in our institutions. So when you enter either the Kogi State University or the Confluence University of Science and Technology or the Kogi Polytechnic or our head institutions, you know that you are going to finish in record time. So these are some of the legacies that you'll be remembered for. And that is why already by far in clear lead, he remains the best to have happened to Kogi State. Okay, thank you so much for that. We do hope that that energy will be sustained until these perpetrators of the Bastardly Act are caught, Dastardly Act rather, are caught and uh, prosecuted. We're waiting for that information. And we wish you well in all the things that you're doing in Kogi. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Kingsley Farmo, for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we've been talking with Honorable Kingsley Fanwo, Commissioner for Information, Kogi State, and we've been talking about the unfortunate event that happened in Kogi State. And right now, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the statement of a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mohamedou Sanusi II, on the state of the nation. Stay with us.